David with Sugar House What Works. So, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about how to deconstruct top to achieve a striping result that is similar to a particular brand of yarn from Germany that comes in a ball and has crazy striping to it. So here we have two braids of a colorway that I do called Monster Kettle. For this tutorial, you're going to need one of two things. You're going to need either a uh, at least four ounces, one, one ounce of each of four different colors, or one kettle dyed braid, or as many kettle dyed braids as you want. And what we're going to do is we're going to deconstruct them. The other thing that we're going to need is a scale. Okay, so we got our scale. Now, the scale is depending on whether you need it depends on how anal you are. If you want really nice, clean, and even striping, then you're going to want to use a scale. If you don't care whether or not your stripes are even, if you want to let them do what they want to, then feel free, don't use the scale. But for this exercise, know that you can use a scale. I'm not going to, to do it on this demonstration. Okay. So the first things first, we're going to take our roving. In this case, I'm going to do this demonstration with a four ounce braid of monster monster kettle. We're going to do this. The first thing you need to do is figure out roughly how many stripes in your socks or your mittens or whatever you're going to do with it, how many you want. Um, on average, braids like these are about four to five yards long, which means that there are 30 to 35 or so nine inch sections. So if you want 70 or so stripes, you got to double your number for your stripes. If you want 70 or so stripes between both socks, you're, we're going to do nine inch sections. If you want more, you split them up into smaller sections. If you want less, you do less. So the first thing we do is we're going to divvy out our fiber. I like nine inch sections for this. I use almost exclusively about nine inch sections, which for me is the length of my hand from here to here. Okay? So from here to here, we're going to break that. Okay? From here to here, we're going to break it. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Just each corresponding section has to be perfect. And we get that by splitting these pieces in half once we're done with this. Okay? Now, you can split these according to color if you want. So say you want this section here. We want all of that together. We can split it like that. Oh, yeah. See this section? Nice and long but it's roughly, a, you know, the same type of color. Okay, we'll put him over, okay? So you can do it this direction with just partitioning it off according to length, or you can do it by color. So like right here, you see how we've got this brown and this blue section? Uh, let's roughly cut it in half here. So this, some of these sections are going to be longer, some of them are going to be shorter. Okay, well, let's go to there. All right. So some of the sections are long, some of them are short. It doesn't really matter what you do, as long as you have roughly this the correct number of stripes that you want, and roughly the width that you want them. That takes a little bit of math. So if, if, if that intimidates you, just section it off nine, nine, nine inches at a time, or so, nine, ten inches. Break your fiber, okay? And don't worry about it. One of the great things about this technique is it produces really fun, interesting socks. Okay, so now we have our pile of fiber here. We 
what we need to do next is we need to break out sandwich bags. And we're going to label one set of sandwich bags A, one set of sandwich bags B. We're going to take our fiber and we're going to split it in half. Now this is where the, the scale comes in because you want each side to be almost the exact same weight. So you need to split your roving down the center exactly the same. Okay, so we're going to lay out one here and one over here. Okay, we're going to grab the next color we want. I mean, it doesn't matter what colors you do in what order, you know. I like this one next. We'll do this one. So we'll split it in half, put the next one next to that one, next one next to this one. Okay, and we're going to just keep splitting little little pieces of roving up and lining them up. They have to be in exactly the same order. Okay. We're just going to keep doing this until we get all of our roving split. Okay. And I'm doing this in no particular order. When you're doing this with semi-solids or solid colors, you've got to do them in order or you can make up your order, but you need to give them an order. Okay. The idea is is that okay. So I've got half of it done, which is enough to show you for this demonstration. So what you do is you grab the first piece that you're going to be spinning on one of your two plies. So this is all going to be one ply. This is all going to be one ply. Okay. Now for the for the one you're going to take the first piece you're going to break it almost exactly in half, okay? You're going to place one half of the piece at the front of the ply. You're going to take him and you're going to put him at the back. Then you're going to take all of these different all of these different pieces that you've deconstructed. This is going to be a uh, single A, this is going to be single B, and this is A, A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6, A7, A8, and you're going to place each one in an individual Ziploc baggie. I recommend sandwich bags. And you're going to keep going until you get all of them in a bag. You're going to make sure that they're labeled. Then you're going to do the next one. You're going to do B1, B2, B3, B4, B5, and you're going to put them in baggies. And then you're going to spin all of single A, and then you're going to spin all of single B in order. And then you're going to ply them together. And what happens is halfway through the first color on single A, you're, you're going to switch to the second color while on strand B, it's still going through the first color. Halfway through strand A, or halfway through strand A on the second one, it's going to start in on the color on strand B. So that half of the time the colors sync up, half the time they do not. And that way you can create these soft striping, color changing yarns that are deconstructed like one of your favorite sock yarns. That is how you deconstruct a roving to suit your desire for a self-striping yarn. And you can do this with, with semi-solids, solid colors, and you can do it with kettle dyes. I do not recommend them with hand-painted, space-dyed rovings. There's a different technique you can use for those, which involves splitting the entire roving down the center and doing the same thing. You take half of the first color on one one uh, of the singles and you're going to put it at the back. So then the, the self-striping yarn does it itself just by staggering your color by a half a color length. Okay. If you like what you saw in the video, head on over to our Etsy shop. Link is in the description below. Like us on Facebook for future uh, announcements for products and videos, as well as give us feedback on what other types of videos you'd like to see in the future in the comments below, and we'll try and make that happen for you. Happy spinning, and have a great day.